Hello everyone and welcome to the On Point show with myself, Jebro. I am one of the European casters uh, for the Pro League actually and for Good Wars 2 PvP for quite a while now. Um, being joined today by Mr. Hurix as well who covers the NA scene, casting with Storm. How are you today, sir? Man, I'm good as always. Really excited actually because uh, this is our first time uh, doing something together since I think we uh, had that little euthanization chat uh, on the last, uh, what is it, like five, six weeklies ago on the Go For or something like that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's nice for us to. Um quite important to give you guys all the information because we want to have the uh, different views from NA, we want to have views from EU as well. And what this show is about is, as I said before, it's about Pro League, right, CT? It's about how we are basically going to give you all the information about the Pro League preview matches and also looking back at matches that have happened as well. And mainly today is about you know giving you this info and also talking about how the teams got to where they have gone to today. As uh, We've got eight teams for... Um, each region now as well as they've gone through different processes which we're going to talk about tonight as well so first of all we're going to talk about exactly what prizing these guys can indeed get so if you want yeah, to go man. through that for us it's it's actually really exciting because first of all uh for the actual season they're going to be getting i mean several thousand dollars per team just for like being in the season basically and, and playing well in the season. So first and second place are going to be getting ten thousand and nine thousand dollars respectively. But they're also both going to be gaining uh, entry into the season finals. But if you look down the line, I mean third place getting eight thousand. But looking at eighth eighth place, I mean you can go zero and seven in the pro league mm -hmm. and still get twenty five hundred dollars as a team. I mean that's ridiculous. That's so that's so cool to me. It's pretty good, and like like you say about that that stat itself. We look at eighth position going for two and a half thousand dollars as well. You didn't, you don't. I mean, obviously teams aren't going to be aiming for the fact that they don't want to like lose any games. But if you lose every single game, you still earn yourself two and a half grand. That's five hundred dollars each for seven games played. <laughs> if you want to work that out, you know, it's like forty five ish dollars, forty dollars per game. Which is like not what people have been getting even recently. So, you know, that's pretty good going, right? Yeah, and you assume like a series per hour, something like that. You get all your matches done. <clears throat> it could be anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour maximum that you're talking. I mean, mm. we're talking pretty good money for someone who's sitting there in college or something like that. That, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying, man, I'm just saying it's a, it's a pretty lucrative option. Of course, man. You don't have to necessarily take that uh, job at the local takeaway that you don't <laughs> want to have to do. Um, you know, you might not want to shout those orders out on a daily basis. So there, there's that for starters. So that's just the league system. That's per region, guys. That's not for, it's not joint. You know, it's not 10 grand between the two. That's prizes for each team per region. So we're going to have a look as well at the season final prizing. So what's, what have we got here? <laughs> I can hear you laughing because you're just like, what? The problem what is, is I'm this? reading chat at the same time and, and okay. Java's in chat. So it's I'm just going to be like randomly giggling at, at any point in time. But yeah, looking at the uh, <laughs> the the season finals. Yeah, so first place going to get $50,000. The last WTS, uh, mm -hmm. the biggest event that we've had so far, was $25,000 for first place. So this is doubling it just for the season finals. And we have to remember that this is just for the season finals. Um, after the second season, it will all culminate into a world finals, which will be bigger than the season finals. Mm -hmm. So, d like, I mean, first of all, get excited for this because first place getting 50,000, second place getting 25, and then 12 uh, and a half for third and fourth. But also looking forward into the future, just, I mean, three months or four or five months or something like that after that, it will all culminate into a world finals that will be the biggest event at that point. So mm -hmm. who knows what that could be? Yeah, I mean, that, like you say, I mean, so let's put let's lay it down for everyone. So we've got, we've just had the qualifiers. This is how, you know, the season's going to go. Qualifiers, and we've got the Pro League for seven weeks. It's going to be strict. It's going to be after Christmas as well, because obviously we haven't got, and there is a little tiny break over Christmas as well. So we'll start like, I think it's mid-January-ish. We do have dates on the website as well. Um, and then we go into our season finals, which is what Hurix was just saying. Then we have a qualifier again, which we'll talk about later on as we link to that. But then uh, teams will play again in the Pro League. They'll have a season finals, but then we'll have a massive end of 
t- second season world tournament, which is exactly what Herix is saying, which we don't actually know is the prize. We don't know the prize pool for that. No idea. And it's going to be... And I, know- can say, I can say actually the season final will be something that's in studio. So the mm-hmm. top teams will go somewhere to yeah. actually play and they'll be with the casters and with the team and everything like that that's doing mm-hmm. production and all that. But also that will be on February 20th. So that will be kind of mid late February um, and the season ends on January 25th. So teams will have uh, about like three weeks or so to prepare and get themselves ready for that final matchup for the season finals in studio. Um, so that one will be actually really exciting. I think the, f- I actually can't remember. I don't think we even know where they are right now, but no. it'll be in a studio. So I imagine ESL studios, maybe like where we cast and yeah, they'll know. be in. We'll have the finals. The season finals will be in NA uh, and the EU. Different ones. We're not sure which 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 is which yet. Uh, but you'll get all that information quite soon. And yeah, we're we're really excited. And like we say, you know, like the qualifiers on Monday, we are going to have every single cast of Pro League and qualifiers and season finals and world championships is going to be in studios. N- there's no more in-house casting, It literally in-house casting, um, other than, you know... Yeah, other no more of this. Me. No, more of, no this. more of this. You get to see us, like, in all our nature and all our glory in a studio, not with makeup on, unfortunately. I'm thinking but, pajamas you know. next week, man. I'm thinking pajamas, pajamas for this next week. Pajam bottoms, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. But anyway, we're going to just jump in. Basically, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just show you a highlight reel. And this is brought to you by Guild Wars 2 Highlights. Uh, Guild Wars 2 Esports Highlights. Um, we're just going to show those for you now as well. It gives you a little bit of a rundown of what happened on NA and EU this week as well. So enjoy the video, about six or seven minutes long. And then we'll come back to you and we'll have a little bit of chat about the results. Who went up into the Pro League and who... Missed out on this season, but you know they've still got a chance to to come back in. And not uh, only maybe, that, yeah. and not only that, but we also will have the matches for this coming Monday oh, and talk about the implications of those matches as well. You definitely want to stick around because the result, the actual preview of the matches is are up in places. But you know this is kind of new information, so you want to stick around. I'm just going to jump into highlights for you. Sneak Gyro coming out from the blue team engineer, which probably lost them a little bit of the cap. I wasn't sure if he brought that out before or after. The uh, condition Revenant as well, shot, trying to get some damage, brings out... Okay, guys, bear with me for two seconds. It's definitely coming. Tested this so many times. Absolutely typical. <laughs> it's not going to show up right now. But I will bring you this video as soon as possible. Have no Sweet fear direct. at all. This is happening, people. Do not worry about it. But, Herix, maybe we can talk quickly about exactly... You know, how did you feel the cast went uh, for you on Monday with the qualifiers? Oh, man, it was pretty exciting, actually. Um... Uh, I actually remember there was a couple of fun moments in it for sure. Uh, an upset actually that will probably happen or you'll probably be able to see on the highlights itself. Um, uh, probably a specific moment in that one of decay, uh, actually radioactive falling and not actually making into the pro league, which is actually a big deal because radioactive is a team on NA that has consistently performed quite well in the top four. I mean, for probably the last six or eight months or something like that, been playing mm. in the ESLs for the past year. I don't think they missed a single ESL. I, I can't remember a time where they missed one. And playing to the point where they actually became very consistent, a pretty good team. They had a good comp for a while where they are actually consistently getting second place. Um, lost uh, like one or two players, got a, better, got a roster back together, still been conf- uh, kind of very consistent. But ever since then, I mean, they haven't really hit that really good stride and... They came into the Pro League, lost a game to PZ, lost a match actually 5v4, which is really hard to do, but (laughs) unfortunately (laughs) dropped that one. But uh, then came back, made it through uh, loser's bracket to get into that uh, final eight kind of deciding matches on Monday um, and lost, though. So they're out. That's sad times. But now they can see exactly what you're talking about. Good. As everything awesome. is ready to go. Good the job, there, was sir. perfect. You did nice. a good job. You did a good job. We're rolling these highlights for you now, guys. Apologies about that. Here you go. Coming 
taking it out from the blue team engineer, which probably lost them a little bit of the cap. I wasn't sure if he brought that out before or after. The uh, condition revenant as well, shot, trying to get some damage. Brings out his elite as well, but we do have Fantastics in the downstate. Is he able to assist in the res? He's not, because the downstate is finished very, very quickly. Now, shot. He might be in a little bit of trouble as he starts to get really focused upon here yeah. by the engineer and the rest of the team. This is absolutely disastrous for team aggression. They had to be holding on to those two points for a significant amount of time. And now they are only 1-1. One, one. Six minutes and a half left on the clock. They have to do something with this quick. But it is going to be short going down. Bulmer in the downstate as well. If anyone can finish him off, this is going to be fantastic news for Purple Noise. Fleshworm Port got him out of danger for a moment, but still in conditions and whatnot on him, and they knew he was downstayed. And now try and pile on towards this quarry to get something out of this. They get ill in downstate. We see the Guardian again trying to get some gaps to try and potentially pick up a res here, as well as dropping a ton of traps on the point. They're getting back up again, and it'll, you know what's going to happen now. We're going to see downstated players coming out. Demon hits the sack first. Then we're going to see a coming out for Lozix very low himself. Joker goes down, and you can predict it's yeah. going to happen almost exactly when one member of Blue Team go down, that is when Silurius starts to lose it because they've spent so many of their cooldowns to potentially finish them off that when it fails, it really, really kicks them in the butt. And Lemming goes down again as these members are just taking turns of bouncing up and down. And Matsu tries to go for the res there. He's so close to getting up, but maybe they should go potentially for the kill on someone else to get the rally. They're not able to, and Lemming is full dead on this side of the map. He certainly is, and Matt, is, Matt might just be following as well as Tamir, both in down states. They're running out of players to get these reses, and this is looking like Car Crash might be running away with this one. P PWN can't really afford to be losing these players right now. Sizer elsewhere has fallen to the ground as well, so this 2v2 going pretty well in favor of Morgans and Roses. They can't quite finish off Sizer just yet, but he is slowly but surely bleeding out here. His chosen rev seems to be the focus target now over towards the quarry, getting incredibly low. Let's see if he is going to be going down, going to be able to use that block on the Revenant, but he is going to be dropped in the downstate. Quove as well, and suddenly wanting to look bad for We Inspire. No, look at the map, look at the points. We've got Quove downstate at four death. Oh, Sizer the same, okay. chosen the same. Oh, you're so close in the end. Forsaker very low himself. I think we're going to see the engineer just get back his HP here. Like and this that. is the thing, Blue he can really sustain himself in his 1v1 between himself and the Necro. And almost takes him out, but the plus one over on this waterfall as they lose players across the map means he's going to lose that fight. And in the end, we do see him going to down Seeing Ferex actually pull off a little bit so he can release some of the pressure from himself. Definitely a good idea as he would get down Just to about 6% like HP. The Blue fight though is going to rotate probably over towards the crossroads. Maybe up those stairs to mid here. We're going to probably see them force that one. As we are going to be seeing three members of this ASAP Zerg team now pushing up into the keep. We do have that hinge tapped out for Blue Team. Zojil is going to go into another 1v1 here with Marvin. Although Marvin not looking healthy at least at the start of this one. So Aerox taken down too over near the mine. And Zeus came over, helped him out, got the kill onto to Ferox. That's not going to be good for ASAP Zerg, who is looking to make a push towards this midpoint. It looks like Java and Capehood hanging out just fine. Zeus going to come in for reinforcements in, a, in this outnumbered fight. Going to help him out. And a lot of damage coming out onto Java once again, but he should be able to maintain himself for the time being. And use that overload to it Should be okay. And Zeus now putting out a lot of damage under the rest of these guys. Throws down the gravity well. Six foot pull. Ahmed getting pretty low here. to be able to heal himself up just fine. And Java once again getting taken down pretty low as ASAPs are continuing to fall behind over 200 point lead here for Team PZ. The Hackerman, who's now sitting at about 70%, we are seeing uh, the Druid get pretty close to about half of his Astro Force there, so he's going to be able to get some heals out. And still, looking at Mime's HP, getting pretty low there, not a lot of condi condition transferring happening from this Necromancer here. Hackerman actually getting down to about 30% HP, we are seeing the Reaper Shroud come out from Mime. But outside of that Reaper Shroud, he's actually pretty low, only 8,300 health. But like you said, Hackerman pretty low here, so is Spiring actually taken down. I do not think they're going to be able to get that one as Cade actually pretty well as well, but I think they should be okay because Hackerman going to be taken down as well. Two-man wipe over here on at the quarry. A pretty close matchup, but Spooky coming out on top, taking a look over at the waterfall, though. We also see Hattie taken down, and this is not what you want at the beginning of a game here. And it looks like Spooky probably going to come out with the two-cap because of this wipe on the side of you back in time.
blue if they're not able to yeah, get up their Yeah, school dies here. This was definitely a bad oh, ending to the but, pretty good play, actually. But they're going for the the Lord now. Dice and Rosing are both going for the Lord. Hughes in the area. And all they need to do is hold on to the, to maintain the two cap. I think Tiffany going to sit at the midpoint. This is just all over the place. I'm not exactly sure what Blue wants to do here as they're looking to try and maintain both options and they have are, a contingency plan if one goes wrong. They are on the Lord right now, though. Looking at this right here, we are seeing the distortion come out onto the Lord through that uh, that well. But uh, we did see the time mark come down as well. Probably another one coming out. I don't know if we actually saw that. Yeah, we, the, the continuous slit did come out. So there is another time warp available here. Dice getting very, very low, sitting now at about 20% HP. Doesn't have, does have both of the Signet heals. Is he able to get them off? Does get the, the Locust off. Now He's getting. Still holding on to the two cap though. Look at the Condi bomb. This is so close. If it doesn't come down to a Lord kill, this could come very close to a tie game, but Dice taken down, that's not going to be. There is the Shadow Refuge from Val, and they need to get him back up. They cannot afford to have a guy die on their side. Uh-oh, uh, Rossing oh, drops Rossing. there as well. They have to get the Lord killed, and if those guys die, that is game over, and Red Team will win this game. They need Crisis, so, and Crisis is gone, as <laughs> ReadyMade is not able to do a whole lot for him there, as Crisis just you know, kind of caught in a bad position, trying to rotate out of the fight. Now Zor trying to get the decap there. And will it be enough? Looks like no. The Moa coming out onto Tesla though. Is Tesla is not going to be sustaining very long here? And ready made on the point in time, but Tesla I'm telling just you, man, blown these two up. guys, these two guys, Zor and Kim Possible here, are just work so well together. Two very strong players. They get another oh, Moa, Moa off again. now onto ready made. This is so big. They're going to get yet another kill. This is such a good way to counter Radioactive's way of playing, and they have been able to do it so well so far in this matchup. This is definitely. The best showing, at least in my mind, so far. I mean, they did definitely, in terms of points, uh, a lot better on the other map, Legacy. But this one, they have just been dominating them across the board. Okay, so we have the NA results for you in. We saw Team Team PZ going 2-0 against ASAP Zerg. You back in time, unfortunately, not getting a game on the board. Going 0-2 to two against Spooky. Zero counter play, grabbing a game, but also correct winning 2-1 in the end with Radioactive taking one game, but easy peasy lemon squeezy, what a name. <laughs> that name is so amazing. Taking uh, two two maps in that series. So how how was how were these uh, series on Monday, Herix? Yeah, these matches were actually really good. Um, PZ actually showing up a lot, um, and they actually did quite quite well there um, in that in, in their matches. We I do want to say that there is a slight uh, mess up there on that screen. It's actually oh. zero counterplay to to auto correct yes, one zero bad. counterplay that moving on there. So actually. so zero counterplay did win that one, but. <laughs> yeah, PZ coming through. That's actually a team that I think uh, people need to look out for because Team yeah. PZ is a team uh, with a lot of experience behind them. They have a great roster. Uh, they basically just stampeded through the entire qualifier, not losing a single match um, at all. They lost. They dropped mm -hmm. no maps throughout the entire qualifier. And actually, uh, like I said before, something interesting is that they actually did have to play uh, one of their maps on Forest as a 4v5 because one of their players, Marvin, actually... DC'd pretty early on, and they still won that map, not against anyone, mm. but actually, I mean, just anyone, but actually against Radioactive, a team that kind of everyone expected to make it in. So I feel like I talk about that a lot, but it's it's like a big deal yeah, that people yeah. need to... I've heard but, you um, say, but it's true, like, you want to highlight the fact that we actually feel like some teams should have got through, and it was the same on EU. We'll have a look at those results again in a minute. So, so Radioactive now, obviously not going through so was there any other unexpected wins or losses during the qualifiers you thought um i mean unexpected wins and losses not really uh i mean other than radioactive dropping games that was definitely mm. a huge uh, a huge story there because i mean like radioactive is expected to make it all the way through they were a top four team in the ESLs, you kind of expect them to at least make it somehow uh, into the top eight, but unfortunately yeah. it just it wasn't in the cards for them. Uh, and Spooky kind of just absolutely dominating you back in time there. That was kind of expected. Zero counterplay versus autocorrect. A very, very good set of matches there. Zero counterplay taking it though. Uh, and that is going to be Moobs and Stormed by Pizza's team there. So uh, congratulations mm -hmm. to them making it in. But Easy Peasy is a team that I think people need to kind of uh, really consider to being a team that could potentially do really well as well. Because okay. 
we saw it in the end, actually, of that highlight where I was talking about uh, two players specifically, uh, Zora and Caden Thompson. Uh, and those two players are players that you probably have seen a little bit in, uh, in solo queue if you guys mm. play on NA at all. But those guys play really, really well together. together. They've played together right. yeah. um, uh, for a while. I, they actually did some GVG stuff together, if I'm not mistaken. So they have oh, nice. some good synergy from that. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, those two guys have been playing really well. Uh, they showed us <laughs> that they can yeah. play that well uh, in the in the qualifying matches, and, and mm. that's a team to look out for, for sure. So so what you're saying is, as well, is something that, you know, people maybe in the chat can take on board, is that even if you're not in a full team at the moment, maybe you can get together with someone else and you can get up there and your synergy and how well you're playing yeah. together. You don't necessarily have to find a team alone if you've got even one or two people um, that you can maybe get into quite, you know, quite a high reputable team and do pretty well as uh, as that team has done indeed. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But there were some really dominant games I noticed as I rewatched the kind of VODs as well. It's just looking through those highlights, like that double um, act as well. As the, uh, was it, uh, Team PZ noticed that their rotations were pretty good as well on them. Yeah, map. their rotations are really good. They yeah. have a lot of, I mean, like I said, they have a lot of great players in terms of their experience. They have players mm. that have been playing for quite a long time. Who? Uh, who you who have players, players that like, what's that? Sorry? Who are, the, who are those guys? I know you're going <laughs> to So you have, you have players like uh, Java, first of all, yep. played with PZ way back in the day, actually. And right. uh, he's back now with his team. So he's going to be, he's on that roster. So a lot of experience behind him there. Awesome. And, uh, on top of that, you also have, uh, I mean, players like Marvin, who have been on <laughs> teams for what mm -hmm. feels like forever at this point. Um, and, I mean, like, honestly, though... Zeus um, and... Uh... Yeah, Zeus, of Zeus course, and, uh, and he Zeus actually was uh, on the team that, at the time, I was actually part of Apex Prime uh, when they were kind of like really dominating the NA scene, people couldn't yeah. figure out how to beat them, and Zeus actually was uh, part of the team that helped actually take down the Apex dynasty Ooh, that was dynasty. Uh, existent for just, just a little bit of time there. You were part of the machine, Yurix. Not really, not really. <laughs> but Almost. I was like, Almost. yeah, by Maybe association, you know what I mean? <laughs> Nice. Okay. So yeah, like Zeus has got some nice, a definite like live experience as well as like K-Pud as well with their, you know, the all stars they did back in yeah. alone. Right. For sure, Java and K-Pud um, being together is is really cool for PZ. And then mm. you, like I said, yeah, Marvin, Zeus, and then of course Muffins as well playing with some yeah. teams. Muffins actually playing for Apex Prime there for you yeah. as well. But um, so yeah, these guys have a lot of history for sure, and a, a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, history so I mean it's it's a cool team to look at um, mm. the one thing that uh, I don't like is I wish PZ or easy PZ would just change their name because the double PZ thing is uh, so annoying. I, I did just get confused and maybe that's uh, no I can't blame that for the mistake I made on the results so I do apologize for that result um, unfortunately <laughs> I did get it a little bit wrong, but it's all good. Uh, they know who won, and so do you. Um, but also, there was uh, what I noticed when I watched Team Spooky is that they had some very dominant team fights and skirmishing on the sides. I think it was on Faux Fire where they took the two cap quite early. Was it? It was Faux Fire. I'm pretty sure it was, and it was quite dominant. You know, their skirmishing was really good, and even when they came together as a team, like there's good coordination and communication. I think as well. Yeah, the thing about you back in time was that they were running five cellies actually, so they had a pretty right. sustainy comp. Um, it was pretty sure. good. Uh, they actually were attempting to to counter comp uh, Spooky, who was running mm -hmm. that two necro thing. Uh, it worked okay on Forest, and they actually got pretty close, but Spooky yeah. took that one, and then on Faux Fire, Spooky was able to make some adjustments, and then uh, just completely demolish them on Legacy. But, <laughs> I mean, yeah, a team like Spooky is a team, again, with a lot of history, at least mm -hmm. uh, of recent past, uh, where they've been very, uh, very, very good, placing top four in every single ESL. But, um, honestly, I don't really think that, I mean, people can hate me, but... Uh, I don't really think that Spooky's going to be a top three team. I don't really think Whoa, that they're going to end up that way. Whoa, bringing out the uh, predictions early on there. <laughs> Not a top three team. Well, we have to we have to wait and see. But otherwise, you know, maybe maybe they can prove you wrong. But we'll have to wait and see, of course. Um, not really much else to mention, but I feel like, you know, the NA scene, the games uh, in the, when I was watching, I think I was watching live or later that day, because it was quite late in the EU, well, you know, they were pretty entertaining, quite competitive as well. Um, and I think, you know, the NA scene has kind of moved on a lot 
further, even in the last couple of months. And, you know, that it's going to be awesome to see a league system where we're not going to see maybe just one team dominate everything because they're only going to play one series of series a Monday, you know, and all teams are going to be in that same situation. So we're going to see, you know, a lot closer games, I feel like as well. And this build up to maybe what, you know, predictions of uh, maybe it's too early to bring that out. I'm not too sure as we're not even in the first week, um, <laughs> but you know, maybe some people think the absurd are going to take it quite easily, but you know, there's some hope there. There's some hope there. Um, we're going to jump into EU results very quickly as well and just discuss exactly what happened there. You see a lot of two zeros on the screen as well. Um, not sure if you had much time to watch the EU Cup. It was on Monday as well. So we saw Purple Noise going 2-0 versus Team Aggression, a World v World team that came into PvP. And they've been really, really impressive in I recent I do want to say, a team that I play with, by the way. Okay. So I know these guys very well. And yes, they felt actually do. pretty good going into that match. They felt like they had a really good shot at it. A lot um, of people but, did, yeah. But, but yeah, the, unfortunately going 2-0, but... I, I I thought those guys were pretty good. I the thing the thing about this the setup is you, you know you see these two O's and everything like that, but these games were probably a lot closer than people expect. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but these teams that did drop Pizza with Nutella, We Inspire, uh, Solaris, and Team Aggression are able to now go into the Challenger League, That's which right. gives them an opportunity at the end of these seven weeks that are about to start up here. Um, uh, I think they, the Challenge League starts in December 1st, mm -hmm. so they'll be able to start uh, queuing up as a guild and then get back into it. And Team Aggression is a guild that I kind of expect that we might see actually uh, come in and try to take a slot for Season 2. Yeah, man, definitely. I mean, they they didn't even play for that long in the competitive streaming-wise and actual tournaments on ESL or AG or whatever else we want to... Um, say as well but you know they from the experience they gained through that they you know they got to the qualifiers on the Saturday and they came into this you know pro league cast I mean I really feel like I feel like you're right you know I mean Purple Noise had some awesome players in there experienced guys who have been playing not together for a you know a long amount of time to be honest as well so a lot of teams actually came together really for this pro league and i feel like team aggression entered into that scene to see how well they would be able to do and maybe focus on that but like you said now you've got the guild challenger league cup you know where people can come in next season and have a chance to challenge maybe some of these guys that won even on that uh, on the qualifier on monday to see if they can get into pro league and demote some of these guys take them off their I guess, almost off their high horse without being on it as of yet. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, it's it's going to be really good. So you guys in chat, you know, you've got completely, you've got as much chance as anyone to get into this Pro League because we've not got that long, like 11, 12 days until that starts. And it's going to be going while the season's going on as well. So, you know, you want to get your teams together and start getting entered into these, uh, into the league as soon as possible, come December 1st anyway. Uh, Silirius Esports uh, had a few problems versus Chaotic Contingency. Again, another one of these new teams who have kind of come together and were ri ridiculously strong as well. But Silirius, I don't think they... I mean, they did lose Posey back over to uh, Car Crash, of course, which is the big news, really, in these matchups as they took two games against Pizza with Nutella. And I think that was probably the, the biggest upset of the day really um pizza with not said a lot of experience as a team together car crashed you know even though we've got three or four members who have won massive tournaments you know we've got blackjack who won wts with orange logo and we've got the, some of the other guys who won our first big cash tournament um pack, back at the uh, pax invitational like two years ago um haven't been back that long and you know it might be three or four months but still, that's quite a long time to be away from the game, and maybe a year for some of those guys as well. Um, but they did quite good. I don't know if you caught any of the car crash versus pizza with Nutella uh, Herix. Sorry? Did you catch any of the pizza with Nutella versus car crash at all? <coughs> uh, I catched a little bit of it, uh, watched it back uh, a little bit, but um, the problem is, man, for EU, we're... I know. In the studio, getting ready for our, know, our stuff, man. That's the problem, and I, I know. know you guys have the same problem too. So we have to all watch it back. But yeah, I mean, this is why it's good Car to Crash. Be Car back. Crash is a team that um, I don't know if you highlighted this yet, but it is a team that actually won PAX yeah, uh, the first right. tournament. Yeah, the t first tournament. I actually remember already that you just said this, but, <laughs> literally just but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's cool to see them back. It's a team uh, yeah. I've actually played with Super before. Really cool guy mm. uh, to play with. 
Um, but yeah, uh, some I, I'm not sure if I really kind of uh, expected Car Crash to take it with pizza, no. or take it over pizza with Nutella. No. Um, especially not 2-0, man. Like that's definitely the more interesting bit of it. But uh, but yeah, they're in it now, and people need to look out for this team because this is a mm -hmm. team with a lot of history as well. And uh, I don't know, man. Do you see them as a top four team at least? P p there's potential. I mean, they changed their comp up on the day. We saw Super was running um, the knockback gyro and flamethrower, and he was Isn't decapping. That a thing? With all, all these EU teams, though? No, we, we don't see it that much. Not in the I, no, 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 sorry, sorry. I, I mean, like, with these uh, these teams, actually, they, they have been changing their comps a lot recently for the oh, EU gotcha. side, where there's a lot, of, a lot of movement, a lot of shifting in terms of the composition and the builds and stuff like that, whereas NA, uh, something I've noticed is that, for the most part, teams are kind of sticking with what they've been running for at least the past couple of weeks. Mm. Uh, there's been some shifting, but not as much as what we've seen, at least from... Uh, from Europe, where you see a lot of players picking up random things, like like you say, Super's build, uh, picking up some kind of weird stuff at the last second, shifting around from even last week what we saw him playing and, mm. and all that kind of stuff. It's a good way to really make sure that you can catch people out, especially in those really important moments like the qualifiers, because they probably thought, all right, Super's going to push, he's going to be running this Selly, you know, uh, Slick Shoes Elixir Gun build. And, you know, it's going to be fine. He's just going to sustain there. He's not going to be able to get the decap later on in the game. But he got quite a few, actually. Um, and could decap versus one to two people. So it was really surprising. And not much changed up in the second map as well. So, you know, it was it was a really, really interesting way to see. Almost that kind of knockback uh, decap NG build that we used to see a lot of that was really a pain in the butt as well. Um, we can all admit that, but it was very effective in that in that situation because they kept one of the druids in a one v one almost every single time um, for you know massive long periods of the game, keeping out a really really you know needed class out of team fights. They did have two druids; it wasn't too bad. But obviously, you know, in the end, they weren't in position to sustain the map the way they wanted to because that comp was quite sustaining in the end as well. Um, but we are going to have a look at the last series as well here. If I can just find my results page. More guns than roses. Taking two games versus We Inspire. We Inspire sizes a comeback attempt there. Unfortunately thwarted by the guns than roses team. Really, really good games for those guys. We've really seen them uh, coming through together as a team recently as well. And I think these are one of the teams that are actually going to go quite far um, in the Pro League. I'm looking forward to seeing those guys getting together and doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a favorite um, going into the EU qualifier. Everybody kind of expected that team to at least make it for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but not only that, going into the Pro League, doing pretty well. Um, in my opinion, I think more Guns N' Roses is going to be a top four team. I think they perform wow. very well. So I, I mean, at the moment, hold on, hold on, hold on. At, at the, the moment, moment, at the moment, I do believe that more Guns N' Roses <laughs> is going to be a top four team. That could change. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about uh, yeah. the volatility of the compositions mm. in EU and how everything's kind of shifting very quickly. So, mm. I mean, that could definitely change very quickly. But at the moment, I think that they're going to be a top four team at, uh, as it stands. Ronnie O. So we're going to rack right on as well. So obviously what we were talking about earlier, the chance of some of these teams and the top eight uh, from each region, which we're about to show you right now. One of these, Some of these teams could be going down in the next season, but let's run through North America first. And who, who have we got eight teams-wise that's going to be uh, joining you in Pro League next Monday? All right, so for North America first, we've got the Abjured. Uh, that is, of course, going to be the top seed. Everybody expecting to probably take first place. They've been consistent over the past year, year and a half, taking pretty much uh, every game since. Uh, <laughs> Forever. I mean, ba barely ever dropping, uh, barely ever dropping maps. Certainly yeah. not losing sets, except for in the World Tournament series where they uh, did drop one to TCG, took it back, and actually wound up winning. But then, of course, the whole fiasco in Boston, losing that one, I'm, I'm sure upset them a lot. But uh, mm -hmm. still, bounced back. Been playing very well uh, for the last uh, 
uh, I mean, last year, of course, but the last couple of months for sure. Uh, Final Forum is going to be actually the new iteration of uh, the Dankening, actually. Mm -hmm. So that is a very strong team running two Druids, two Chronos, and an Elementalist right now. Blah, 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 running that Elementalist. And uh, that's actually a very interesting roster, picking up Zeromus as well. So they have something very interesting going on with them. Apex Prime is going to be the next team, picking up Ostrich Eggs, actually. Yeah, I know, A player man. that uh, people How should hype is know. that? Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. So yeah, they're going to have him. He's going to be playing uh, NG and Necromancer uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. that team. So that Necro, could be very interesting. Really. He's kind of playing with it again. Okay. But yeah, um, then we have Never Lucky, a team that actually I need to bring up, man. Never Lucky mm. is kind of struggling right now. They've uh... Oh my god, the team name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even but, clock uh, that. But clock uh, that. They, they have actually... They have actually... Um, not been lucky. Not not been very lucky <laughs> because unfortunately one of their players actually had to bounce. Uh, physics actually is out, so mm -hmm. um, they had they are now kind of trying to pick up the pieces and figure things out because this is a team that actually was looking very good um, yeah. prior to uh, prior to this happening right now, and now they're going to have to try to figure out a, a way to get back into it because it's, like I said, a team that's very very strong. If they can find someone which I think that they can. I mean, there are a lot of names out there that people uh, can toss around to pick up. I mean, a lot of names, I'm not going to name any, but a lot of names didn't make it into uh, the Pro League at the moment and are very, very good players mechanically and rotationally, and I think that would be good additions to this team. But moving on to the uh, the next one, of course, we have the teams that made it through the Open Qualifiers, and that's going to be PZ. Like we said, we talked about them already. Already, I mean, yeah. uh, K-Pud, Marvin, Java, Muffins, I mean, uh, and Zeus, of course. Uh, a very strong team there. Spooky, a team that's been very consistent over a long period of time. Very versatile in terms of their ability to adapt and uh, kind of on the fly and, and be really, uh, like I said, adaptable. But the next one is not autocorrect. Not autocorrect. It's zero counterplay. Yeah. So... Not autocorrect, but it's zero counterplay. Uh, that is a team that I'm not really sure how that's gonna go. Uh, sorry, Moobs and Chat, man. Sorry, Storm by Pizza. I know you're gonna you're gonna hate me, but um, that's the team that has to really kind of come out and uh, and really kind of prove it to everyone else that they can perform at the same level as some of these other teams that are kind of mm -hmm. already expected to be top four. Um, but I mean, they still do have some really solid players, and I think that if they put in the work, they're gonna perform really well. So I mean. That's uh, something to look forward to as well. And the last team, the Burst Comp, uh, probably, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe one of the burstiest comps, really. Uh, still running a Thief there, but they're going to be running a Thief, a Mesmer, and actually a, uh, a Dragon Hunter as well. And all mm -hmm. these guys are going to come together uh, and actually just completely dumpster people. Um, they still have that Druid that's really hard to take down. They still have that Elementalist that's pretty hard to take down as well, both of those guys being able to support the team as well. So... Definitely a really interesting comp there. That is actually the comp that uh, the OS Barry spam happened uh, in that chat right. when, when they took on uh, Radioactive. Awesome. Uh, just absolutely demolishing OPN, actually, the medium damage. So uh, that's going to be... Uh, I mean, we got got eight interesting teams, man, for sure. What's going Definitely. on with Europe, though? Oh, EU's have been pretty smart at the moment. Just have a look. Orange logo. Of course, we all know who those guys are. Winning a World Tournament Series. Attending two in the end as well, which is the way they got here in the first place. A couple of roster changes. Freilina going over towards the Civilized Gentleman, of course, as well. Uh, with Frosty. Frostball coming in towards the Orange logo. A couple of comp changes. A few differences and a few different classes taken up as well. Uh, especially by Orange Logo, but then Civilized Gentleman as well, of course. You know, Helseth, the rest of the guys, you know them very well. Played in the last WTS, played in our first World Tournament Series as well. So, you know, we're looking forward to seeing big things from Orange Logo and the Civilized Gentleman. But Rack 55 Dragons coming through the go for as well, actually. You know, they came through that qualifying process. They were top of the league as well as also Vermilion coming through there as well. Vermilion, you know, maybe... Not new compared to some of the teams below those guys as well, but they've not really been that consistent in the scene. Some players who have been in different teams from time to time, in different pairings as well, but they've, they've done a really, really good job of coming in, and they're really competing well against, you know, the Orange Logos, the TCGs, and the Rank 55 Dragons, of course. And then we've got the guys below that, of course, who have qualified this past Monday. Purple Noise, Chaotic Contingency, Car Crash, and more Guns and Roses. And now we're going to be able to have a look, and hopefully this preview screen is right, um, at the 
it definitely will be, right? Because we've got zero counter play up at the top versus the Abjured as the first match of the day come this Monday. So what are you looking at here in terms of the closest games, really, um, that come out on Monday's series? Okay, so for NA, because I believe we're doing both of them at the same time, uh, for NA, the, the series that I think would be the most interesting uh, is going to be the one of Java versus Ostrich Eggs, man. PZ <laughs> versus Apex nice. Prime. And this is one I'm actually very curious what everybody thinks. So I want everybody to go ahead. I have a straw poll ready for everyone. Uh, and I want to see uh, <laughs> uh, what everybody thinks about this one. I'm going to go ahead and put it in chat right now. So go ahead and go to the straw poll. Tell us who you think is going to win. Apex versus PZ. And I'm actually going to weigh on on this one myself. I think, okay. I think that PZ is going to take this game. And I don't even think that they're going to... Really? I, don't, I don't think they're going to drop a map. I think it's going to be 2-0 to PZ. They're going to drop a map either. I think it's going to be 2-0 to PZ. And, and there's a reason why. Okay. Apex has actually found their composition. Uh, they feel pretty good right now. Okay. But the thing is right now, I think jo uh, uh, Java's team, PZ has done so well throughout this qualifier and, mm -hmm. and really proven themselves and their ability to, to rotate and not only not only rotate, which is obviously a huge deal yeah. against a team like Apex, but um, their mechanical skill is actually pretty high as well. And I think that they're going to take it. It looks, though, that I might be... I don't what? know, man. It's 18-15 right now. People think that uh, Apex Prime has a pretty good shot. And, and that's I'm actually... as well. I'm I mean, Apex Prime, is team, a, Apex Prime is a good team, man. Apex Prime is a good team. So, I, I mean, of, they, I mean, they qualified before even I mean, they made it to the now. ESL. You, so, you can't I, can't, can't, I can't go back now. I can't go back. You, you PZ taking it 2 -0. PZ taking it 2 -0. <laughs> Okay, I'm okay. It. I actually feel I feel like Apex Prime might win, but just because I remember okay. how, how crazy dominant they were at, at one stage. But things change, and I think that's what you're sensing here. So, you know, I think there's something in that. But we're going to just quickly have a look at the rest of the NAs and we might have a little bit more of a straw poll in a minute but we can let that run one roll and come back to it and see uh, what everyone else thinks. But, you know, never lucky. They're, they're really, they've got to pull together right this week. They've got to get their comp sorted. They have not got long to go until Monday. They've got two days in between now and then and they have to get, one, they have to get a team and two, they have to practice. That is a yeah. really short and, period of time. Yeah, and going against Spooky, that's definitely going to be tough and i'm not yeah i'm not i'm not so sure about I that one i think yeah <laughs> spooky probably going to be taking that one too oh yeah and yeah of course zero counterplay versus the absurd we kind of all know how that's going to ha uh, pan out but final form versus easy pc is actually going to be a good match because it's 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 the first time actually that we're going to be able to see final form yeah. uh, on stream in a tournament setting since boston uh at the awesome. World Tournament Series. So that's going to be a really interesting match against a team Easy Peasy that now needs to actually kind of prove them, uh, prove themselves to everyone, prove that they're a team that's worthy to play against these teams that have been competitive for so long. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be their first opportunity to do that. So that's definitely also going to be a really interesting match. Great stuff. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to stay up late enough or at least have it on my phone while I'm driving back from uh, from the studio uh, and I can actually you know check out some of these games because they're going to be really really interesting series obviously make sure what time is that PST is it 5 p.m. PST that's on yep Monday so that, this coming Monday guys the NA this is your matchups for the Monday of course 5 p.m. PST and we are going to go over towards the EU as well. We could preview. We're not going to spend too much time on this. But we've got Car Crash versus Vermillion. Now, this is actually my pick for probably what could be one of the closest series. Maybe people won't agree with me in that. Possibly as well with Orange Logo and uh, Chaotic Contingency. But all of these series, as I look at them again, you know, feel like they could potentially be quite close. Because we've got, you know, more Guns N' Roses versus TCG in there. And, you know, we've seen those guys' momentum as a team at the moment. They feel like they're quite powerful and they're going to be able to do something pretty good. As well as Purple Noise, who are obviously quite confident in the qualifiers as well. Um, how's that straw pile doing and the other one? We can put another one up, can't we, anyway? Yeah, we have it. So <laughs> we can PZ looks like people... It's 22 to 18, 23 to 18, actually. People think PZ. So maybe... Maybe people kind of agree with me, but yeah, I put out the straw poll already for the Vermilion versus Car Crash. And nice. first of all, before I say anything, who do you think? 
What do you think the score line's going to be? You have to put your money on the line right now like I did, man. Car crash for a million? Yep. <laughs> I like both of them. These are actually put your two money of on my the line, man. teams in this. Put your money on the line, man. <sighs> 2-1 Vermillion. 2-1 Vermillion, okay, okay. But you know I don't know, I can't, I, the thing is, is because of Monday, like, Car Crash are just such, like, a, they're like a wild card man at the moment. I don't know where they're going, because they changed their comp last minute. I was not expecting Super to run what he did, and it worked so well. So they countered, they counter comped, even just by changing him, to a degree, very well. Just by changing a couple of the utilities. He was able yeah. to make them get that lead. So if they could pull something like that off, I feel like they'll win. But I feel like Vermillion, you know, they're very strong. I know they're they're scrimming, you know, top teams at the moment as well to get that experience. And uh, Car Crash, you know, they're, they're very underdoggy, but maybe not even the team that a lot of people were like, they're going to be the bad guys of the Pro League, I feel like, you know. <laughs> they're they're going to be the, the guys that everyone's going to be watching. They're really, really good. At, uh, but, you know, they kind of... Yeah, trolly here and there, but I, you know I like that character. I love it, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So, but I still think maybe even million, uh, just based on be, um, recent experience and how strong those guys are. Possibly two one. Um, still close, maybe still close. So, what do you think about these other matches? Because I'm looking at it, and of course we have more Guns N' Roses versus TCG, Orange mm -hmm. Loco versus Chaotic Contingency, and 55 versus Purple Noise. But honestly, the way that I see it, I think Civilized Gentlemen. That could go to a 2-1, but I think TCG is going to take it uh, yeah. pretty easily. And then obviously Orange Logo versus Chaotic, I think everybody can agree here. Orange Logo is going to be really strong coming out of that one. And then 55 versus Purple Noise might be an interesting match, but I think mm -hmm. 55 is going to take that as well. Do you think that you can expect anything kind of strange or maybe some upsets to come out of those bottom three matches there, 2, 3, and 4? I think Chaotic Contingency could pull something out against Orange Logo. Again, one another one of these teams that have come together fairly recently, and I say recently as in, you know, maybe month or so, month or two, three. But I, I feel like something could happen versus Orange Logo, but even not like on the monthly, you know, didn't extra, expect Orange Logo to be that strong, and they still came out um, pretty strong in the end in that tournament. So, you know... I really feel like in both regions, we have really tight contestion in the EU, especially even for the top. Like top spot, I'm not sure I can call it. I've got my predictions written down. I don't want to do them yet because the Monday is still a thing. Um, but first day, like I think we might be able to get an idea of maybe how the Pro League's going to go. But EU is wide open. I think you're right about NA as well, potentially. Um, maybe first might be the abjured based on like previous experience but then all the spots from second to eighth pretty pretty open yeah pretty much i mean we can it, it's yeah like we like I, like you said for na at least gonna be very open uh, abjured mm -hmm. probably the favorite like you said to take first place but then yeah two through eight is completely up in the air i mean any team can probably take that and that's basically just down to kind of like the fact that a lot of these teams are new um a lot of the, the teams that are kind of starting off strong like PZ, haven't really proven themselves in uh, the monthlies or anything like that, so we don't know how that's going to go, but teams that have been in the monthlies and the ESL weeklies have been kind of less than consistent, so mm -hmm. you never really kind of know how that's going to pan out, so the 2 through 8, I mean, that's, like you said, up in the air, yeah, man. man. I don't know. It's going to be good, it's going to be good. So, um, we can have a quick look at those draw polls and see what the results were in the end, but otherwise, that's pretty much it from us, guys. Uh, 23rd, like someone said in the chat as well, this Monday, EU is going to be live at 6 p.m. GMT, that's 7 p.m. CET, and it will be on at 10 a.m. PST. That's right, yeah, flipping time zones. Look at that, mate. I got that. I got that one locked down. Yeah, <laughs> that man, was you good. Did. That was good. Okay, so, and then we've got NA, um, obviously, 5 p.m. PST as well. So you have to keep watching. Make sure you check out Hurix on Monday as well. Make sure you're following him on Twitter because, you know, we give pieces of information out stuff behind the scenes that you might not have seen and information about the team so you can follow him at ct Hurix. you can also follow myself at jeb dan and uh, how were those straw poll results in the end as well yeah man it looks like people are kind of siding with me here it looks like pz nice. uh, seems to be the favorite in that matchup they have a 57 percent majority oh. there over 43 percent from apex prime yeah. and on the eu side it's actually a 
pretty close as well. Uh, we saw Vermillion 56% over Car Crash 44%. Wow. So it looks like Vermillion just a slight favor, yeah. uh, favorite in that matchup as well. But th I think the interesting thing is how close these uh, these are. <laughs> really? And, and that's actually kind of uh, part of why I love this, actually, because, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I mean, the Pro League could go anywhere. I mean, it's actually, the, for, for the first time, at least in my opinion, uh, since we started doing PvP, where actually you have eight teams where you have no idea where they're going to end up at all in terms of placing. I mean, you can kind of assume that there might be a top one, top two, something like that. But after that, I mean, who knows, yeah. honestly. And all those positions, you know, in a way matter because they don't want to be in the lower side because they don't want to get relegated. They want to earn more cash. And you saw the differences between the teams and how much they're going to earn as well. So, you know, that's, that's all the information you guys really need for today. We are going to leave you with that league screen as well. We're going to see you very soon. Thank you very much, Hurix. You've done a great job. We have been your hosts for the first show of On Point. Again, apologies about a couple of technical issues. First show, but next week we're going to smash it. We'll see you soon, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. And cheers, Good Wars, too, as well, for helping us put this show together. Anything else you want to say, Hurix, before we go? That's it, man. Thanks for coming out and watching us, guys. And uh, we'll see you next week for sure. Definitely stay tuned for, uh, for Monday. Those are going to be some good matches. See you soon, guys. Take it easy.